going to begin reading verse number 18. And this is all we want is one verse out of this prompt, verse 29. And verse number 18 reads, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Verse 18 again, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Every head bow, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. Praying that chapter 29, Spirit, verse number 28, wanted to deal with the word vision. If you would indulge me just for a minute, just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. today, but today is the day that God is getting ready to open your vision. Just in case that was the wrong neighbor, turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, today is the day that God is getting ready to open your vision. Now do one last thing for me and I promise to leave you alone for about 10 minutes. Look at that same neighbor and say, neighbor, welcome to the VIP section. Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, welcome to the VIP section. In Proverbs 29, verse number 18, we find that the proverbial writer who was none other than King Solomon, one whom God anointed with wisdom, took over after his father David, and God would show himself mightily in his life. He would be the man that we come to know as the one that would pen most of the book of Proverbs. It is here that we find that in this 29th chapter that he begins to address the word vision. As we read the book of Proverbs, we would understand that the Proverbs overall view, that it deals with the fear of God. It deals with the wisdom of God. And it also deals with the character of mankind. We find that in that first chapter that Solomon would begin to write and he would talk about how wisdom is crying in the streets. And how for so long people have ignored the cry of wisdom. He deals with how long will you simple ones love simplicity. He deals with change. By the time you get to Proverbs chapter 8, he begins to deal even more with wisdom. And he begins to say that God begot you in the beginning of his way. That before the mountains were, before the depths of the sea were created, God had wisdom. It is here in this book of Proverbs that we find that in that chapter 29, that first of all, he starts off writing. And he says that he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. It's here that we find that he starts off dealing with vision. He starts off dealing with how sometimes you can be wrong for so long until when you hear what is right, it don't even bother you. Sometimes you can get caught up in the wrong way for so long until sometimes the conviction that comes from the word of God is not where it should be in your life. He tells us in this chapter one, be weary, beware that when you get to this place that sometimes destruction will come. And sometimes it comes without remedy. We find that as we continue to read, by the time we get to verse number five, he tells him in verse number five, the man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. The proverbial writer, he takes time to warn you and I that you have to be careful when everybody speaks well of you. He's saying that sometimes that cheerleader that's cheering you might not really be on your team. Sometimes the people that pump you and lift you up, sometimes they may not be on your team. It says that when you indulge in flattery, when people begin to flatter you and always tell you how wonderful and how great you are, it says that sometimes they're setting a trap for you. You have to have somebody in your corner that knows when to encourage you, but also knows when they need to correct you or when they need to admonish you. I don't know about you, but I need somebody in my corner, somebody in my life that knows how to challenge me, that knows how to make me look at the situation twice and know that I'm not right all the time. Some of us, we are surrounded by a lot of yes people. You you got a lot of yes people in your corner. Yes, you okay, and yes, you're right. Girl, ain't nothing wrong. I need somebody that will look me 
came out and said, now you might not like me after I tell you this, but there's something wrong with the way you're handling this situation. I don't need a life and a boat full of yes people, but I need somebody that will tell me that's a bad move. I, I wouldn't agree with that. They might not hear you. They might not take heed, but I need somebody that will look me in my eyes and tell me the truth. I believe in my sanctified imagination. There's a mother sitting in here right now by the name of Mother Bell. And I know she don't mind me bothering her just for a little while, but I go by and see Mother Bell during the week. And me and Mother Bell, we got a special thing going on. Don't y'all judge me and Mother Bell. That, that's my sweetheart back there in the back, Mother Bell. I go by and I visit her, and sometimes I break off a little chain. Sometimes I just go over and get a little hug. Every now and then, e man, she'll even offer to fix me breakfast. I'm talking about me and Mother Bell. Y'all ain't going to let me preach about Mother Bell. But one thing I love about Mother Bell is that Mother Bell is seasoned. She knows how to encourage you. I go over there, and she'll tell me, baby, you my, she called me her knee baby because Kobe is her other baby, but I'm her knee baby. Y'all know, old folk know what knee, knee baby is. Knee baby is when you got one on the knee and one in the stomach. Y'all ain't going talk back to me in here so mama calls me her knee baby and when I get over there she'll say baby you tore it up Sunday you just you just preached up something you a preacher machine so she'll give me all my accolades and then she'll finish saying, now you stay humble now I need you to stay I need don't get you don't you get the big head don't you go to thinking that you can do that without Jesus now that's Jesus doing that up there that ain't you just a vessel now I'm, I'm talking about mother Bell. y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here you need somebody in your life like a mother Bell. That'll tell you that it ain't all about you. To tell you that you're not that terrific without God. I need somebody that will not just fill my mind with flattery, but will rather give me somebody to say truth, truth, truth. She tells me to stay humble. And so by the time we get to verse number 18, Solomon now begins to deal with the word vision. He says where there is no vision. He says that the people will perish. Don't miss this. When we look at the word vision, he's talking about spiritual vision, spiritual sight. Tell me what you see. When we look at the word vision, it's been here ever since the book of Genesis. According to Genesis chapter 15, when God called the father of our faith by the name of Abraham, he wanted to reassure Abraham that the promise he gave him in Genesis 12 was still sure so he gives Abraham somebody say vision that's what God does when you read the readings of Daniel you know Daniel the one that was in the lion's den the one that fasted for 21 days and the angel told him from the first time that you prayed Daniel I've heard your prayer that Daniel the one that was almost as close as John in the book of Revelations because when Daniel wrote he wrote about end time events but it would be Daniel that God would show end time events but he showed Daniel end time events through somebody say vision uh, when you get into the writings of Jeremiah also to the writings of Ezekiel God dealt with his prophets through vision according to Numbers chapter 12 around verse number 6 when Miriam and Aaron got in trouble God told Miriam and Aaron he said listen when I deal with my prophets I deal with my prophets through vision but with the man of God Moses I deal with him mouth to mouth even in the New Testament according to Acts chapter 10 there was an apostle by the name of Peter going to up with another man by the name of Cornelius and God will send Peter a vision and send Cornelius a vision that they should meet up at the same time for the power of the Holy Spirit. We find that in Acts chapter 16 when Paul was getting ready to start the church down there in Philippi that before Paul starts the church the Bible says that he saw in a night vision. What are you saying young preacher? God is a God of somebody say vision. Not your 22 natural, your 2020 natural vision but a God of spirit spiritual vision according to first Samuel chapter 3 around verses 1 through 5 there was a young prophet by the name of Samuel he was a little boy serving another prophet by the name of Eli but the Bible say that during that time there was no open vision which simply means that God had shut heaven up and he wasn't speaking anymore and so he raises up a young prophet by the name of Samuel to bring vision back to his people you need a man of God that can preach to you the word of God that you can understand the vision of God that you may live somebody shout vision 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 it's all about your vision there are two types of visions there is your natural vision and there is your spiritual vision what do you mean young preacher let's deal with natural vision first and then we'll move forward according to Isaiah chapter 6 the Bible says that in the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah said I lifted up my eyes and I beheld the throne of God I saw the train of God he saw the angels the cherubims flying around the throne of God crying holy 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 and when Isaiah saw the 
throne of God, when he saw how holy God was, when he saw how pure God was, he said, woe is me because I am a man of unclean lips. What are you saying? Don't miss this. Because of what he saw with his natural eye, it allowed him, it made him, it put him in a place to realize how far off he was from being really saved. I don't want to stay here long, but I want to stay here long enough because it is very important as to what you see with your natural eye. Say, neighbor, what are you looking at with your natural vision? What are you looking at with your natural eye? Because I must see better if I want to be better. Sometimes if I'm not careful, I can surround myself with people that ain't going nowhere. I can surround myself with people that are not making moves. But I dare you just to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you're going to ride with me, I need you to be somebody that know how to make moves. I'm not getting hooked up with somebody that's staying stagnant and you ain't doing nothing with your life. You don't want nothing out of life. You don't want to progress in life. I need to be hooked up with somebody that want to do something. I need to be hooked up with something that I can see how bad. Young Jones is your natural vision. Those of you that went to school around the same season that I went to school, they would give you a worksheet. But on top of the worksheet, the problems would not be worked out. But at the top of your page, the teacher would always give you an example that you can see. Because even the educator know that I got to give you an example that you can see, that you can know how to work out this problem. There are some seasons in your life you got to surround yourself with somebody that you can see that can be an example to you as to how to be better. Sometimes your problem ain't you. Sometimes your problem is you got a bad example. You've been looking at the wrong thing. You've been following the wrong person. You just surrounded yourself with the wrong people. But somebody shout, I have to see a better example. You're saying, Young Jones, I believe that God had got this. I believe that before man ever wrote it, that God had already had it in his mind that man needed to see something better in order for man to be better. How do you know this, preacher? Because by the time you get to Matthew chapter 1 and it says that a virgin shall be with child, God had made up in his mind, I'm going to take my word off of tablets. I'm going to take my word off a of written paper and I'm going to put my word in a human body because man need to see it if he ever going to live it, y'all gonna talk back to me in here he says I got to put it in Jesus because if you can see it you can live it y'all ain't gonna talk you ought to tell somebody it's kind of hard to duplicate what you ain't never seen it's kind of hard to duplicate something that you ain't never experienced that's why I believe in my sanctified imagination we have young men that don't know how to be men we have young men that don't know how to be fathers we have young men that don't know how to be husbands we have young men y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here because they cannot be what they have never seen and so you have to surround yourself Say, neighbor, you got to surround yourself with somebody that looks like something that you're trying to become. What do you mean, young preacher? Y'all have your seats here very, very briefly. I don't want to stay here long, but I had a young man come talk to me this week, and he sat down, and he opened up his heart to me, and he said, listen, young preacher, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. He says, I've never had a father figure. I've never had somebody to show me how to be a husband or how to be a daddy or how to be a head. He said, I've never seen it. He said, so I really, he said, I want to do it. I just don't know how. I say, sit right there. I'm going to tell you how to do it. What he's saying is, I need to see something because if I can see it then I can y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here what do you mean young preacher because uh, very seldom when people are growing up in their homes uh, sometimes we find that our children are a product of what they see how do you know this young preacher you can have a little boy that grows up in a home where his mother is battered and he'll swear to himself I never put my hands on a woman but when he gets married he'll find himself beating the brakes off of his wife too because I found out that sometimes uh, people will duplicate what they see see I'm trying to preach to somebody I ain't trying to preach to everybody tell somebody if your example is messed up then you are gonna be messed up can I talk here just for a little while this is why we even as mothers when you're raising your single daughter what you show your baby is very important what you allow your child to see is very important here you are a single mother trying to raise your child understand that what you show your baby your baby will become you ain't got time to be sleeping around and changing boyfriends from month to month because you got a baby that you're trying to raise up and you can't raise up your child any kind of way. You got to give your child something to see. What are you saying? Young Jones, we live in a day and time where mothers are now smoking weed with their daughters and now we got the daughter smoking weed in front of her child. Now all of a sudden, now the child sees this and now you say, baby, I don't want you to do that, but the child doesn't do what you say. They do what you do. So we have to be able to be somebody shout, an example. Y'all have your seats here. Vision. All vision isn't good vision.
Y'all don't mind me stopping it for a little while, do you? Because vision without light will kill you. I'm going to stop here just for a minute. Genesis chapter 11, we find that there was a group of people building a tower of Babel and they had vision. But they didn't have any light. It's not enough to have vision without light. Psalmist said it like this. He says, that word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The vision of God and the word of God are synonymous with one another. You need light with your vision. Preacher, why do I need light? How can I get in light? How can my vision be in light? How can I make sure that my vision lines up with the word of God? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need you a preacher. I don't want to stay here long, but I'm going to stay here long enough according to the book of Rebecca. You know, nowadays they got this sideline religion now, Bishop. They got this sideline Christianity now. You got folk that thinking, I, I don't need me no pastor because the pastor is a man just like me. And I don't, listen, if you didn't need no pastor, God wouldn't have gave you one. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. You might well take all the pastoral scriptures out of the Bible and create your own Bible if you don't need. Yo. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. So, according to the book of Rebecca, God tells Rebecca, I need you to write the vision. Write it upon tables and write it upon tables that they may run which readeth it. What he means is I need the preacher to make the light and the vision plain that people can live. What do you see, young Jones, when you deal with vision and how we need a man of God to help us keep our vision in focus? You need to preach word of God, not just on Sunday. Y'all pray for me here. So I found out that sometimes the battle is the fact that you are a Sunday Christian. What's the danger, young preacher, with being a Sunday Christian? I'll tell you what the danger is because some of us are nearsighted. Some of us are farsighted. And, and sometimes it's the man of God that you have to write the right prescription in your life to make sure that he corrects your vision. Because sometimes when you leave church on Sunday, your vision is intact. But by the time Wednesday come around, your vision is jacked up again. I, this ain't for everybody, but this is for somebody. You ever came to church on Sunday rejoicing? And by the time you made it to Wednesday, you forgot what the preacher preached on Sunday. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me in here. You need that word that it can keep your vision in focus. Somebody say, keep your vision in focus. Keep your vision you need to be able to see in order to play the game of life. When I come in and I hear the preach word of God, what the preacher is doing, he's writing out a prescription to correct my farsightedness. Sometimes I'm nearsighted, but it is the preacher that knows how to preach and he allows me to keep my mind, my vision in focus. Why, young preacher? Y'all don't mind me taking my time, do you? Why do I need to keep my vision in focus, young preacher? Because there are some things that will affect your vision. Tell your neighbor, watch out, because there are some things that will mess your vision up. There are some things that will, that will block your vision. There are some things that will corrupt your vision. How do you know it? Don't preach according to Isaiah 28 and around verse number 7. The Bible says it like this. It says, but they have also erred through wine and through strong drink or out of the way. The priest and the prophet had erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. It says they are out of the way through strong drink. And then it says they err in vision and stumble in judgment. What are you saying? Young Jones, that God is saying in the book of Isaiah that my priest and my prophet was all right until they start drinking a little bit. I ain't talking to everybody, but I'm declaring I'm talking to somebody. He said they were okay until they started to get drunk with wine and taking a little sip of that strong alcohol. It says that it messed up your vision. How do you know, young preacher, that it messed up your vision? Y'all gonna make me preach up in here. I'll tell you how I know because you can be a young lady with your mind made up that you ain't gonna have sex tonight, but there's something about that wine that just relaxes you. You ain't drunk, but the wine just gets you a little loose. Y'all ain't gonna talk. I want somebody that done drunk wine the surgeon said, preacher, you preaching that thing because there's something about that wine that just put my body at ease. And where I would say no, now the wine got me saying, man, I might think about doing this thing. You have messed up your vision. The wine that messed up your vision. The wine cooler that messed up your vision. You stumble in judgment. Y'all don't mind me talking here just for a little while. Sometimes even in our marriages, your vision done been affected. I'm going to stop here for a minute because I feel like it. I just feel like stopping here, Brown, so I'm going to stop right here. Your, 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 your baby, your wife was okay until something affected your vision. Y'all ain't going to talk right to me. 
I want to stay here for a little while. She was all right. But you got something caught up in your eye that made you mess up your vision. Now she can't do nothing right. Now you mad at her every time you wake up. You ever been there? Somebody married her and said, amen. My husband mad at me right now and I don't know why. Let me tell you why. Something wrong with his vision. I can't talk like I want to. I don't know what her name is, but something. I hope it's a her. Okay. Y'all ain't going to, okay. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Your husband was all right. He was your boo. He was your knight in shining armor. He was your man, your, your sweet thing, your, your dying piece. He was your man. And all of a sudden, he starts slipping. Can't talk like I want to. And see, I'm going to say this here while I'm here, Bishop. I hope I don't get in no trouble. Some of you ladies have to stay prayed up. Because you, you, you know how to replace him if he ain't playing right. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to stop, stop right there. This ain't all y'all, but this is one or two of y'all. Some of y'all know how to replace a joke if he ain't playing. The, oh, you don't want to play the position? Oh, oh you don't want to play quarterback? Oh, oh you don't, you don't want you don't, you don't to run the play? Oh, oh, don't. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Uh-uh. Don't fellas, get worried when your old lady start telling you, don't worry about it. It's good. I'm all right. No, you ain't got to change. No, uh-uh. No, you good. We good. It is an indication that somebody's getting ready to come in the game. Y'all ain't gonna. Y'all ain't gonna let me preach up in here. <laughs> Oh, she done stopped fussing. She done stopped yelling. Now she just quiet. <laughs> you better start praying. <laughs> you were okay. But all of a sudden, you stop complimenting her because you got something, something in your eye. And all of a sudden, now she going to work and somebody telling her how good she look every day. You don't even notice that she done changed her hair. Girl, I'm changed her hair three times. You, done, you ain't said nothing. Somebody on the job just complimenting her when she ugly. Y'all. Y'all pray for me, right? You know when somebody, when a dude is out for something, he'll compliment a woman when she ain't looking her back. Y'all. He complimented her when she a three. You won't compliment her when she a ten. I'm going to leave it alone. Ladies, I said all that to say, make sure you don't get nothing caught up in your eye. Right? Because the devil knows how to show you a vision. He knows how to give you something to look at. And so because my vision can be affected, because the enemy knows how to creep things into my life that will affect my vision, it is important to me not to be just a Sunday Christian, but a Christian that is in tune to the word of God. That way that my vision can remain in focus. Say, neighbor, how do you see things? The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but not having vision. Some of us have sight, but we don't have vision. According to Psalms 146 and verse number 8, it says that the Lord opened the eyes of the blind, that the Lord raises them up that are bowed. The Lord loveth the righteous. I need my eyes to be open. Somebody say, Lord, open my eyes. There are sometimes you have to have your eyes open because sometimes there could be destruction or judgment around the next corner. But if your eyes not open, you may miss it. According to the book of Numbers, there was a prophet by the name of Balaam, and he was coming to curse God's people. As he began to come to curse God's people, he's riding on a donkey, and the donkey sees the deaf angel and the donkey won't go no further now the man begins to beat the donkey because he's trying to get the donkey to go forward but the, de the, but, the but the donkey can see what the man cannot see and so now when God opens up his eyes he can see the deaf angel waiting to cut him off he can see the deaf angel waiting to kill him there are some seasons in your life you need your vision to be open because death could be around the corner you don't know that judgment can be around the next move that you are about to make and so I need God to open my vision I just want to deal with open vision here according to second Kings chapter 6 around verse 17 there was a prophet by the name of Elijah and he's surrounded by enemies he's on top of a mountain and he has a servant with him and the Bible say that his servant was afraid his servant was fearful because all he could see was the army that was against him but then the prophet began to pray and he said Lord I need you to open up my servant's eyes and then when God opens up the servant's eyes he looks around and all of a sudden now he don't see the men that's surrounding him he looks up and he see angels of God on chariots of fire because God 
God open his vision. Somebody shout, Lord, I need you to open my vision because when I am a child of God and if I live without open vision, I find myself living in fear and in worry because I can't see what God is doing in my life. May I submit to you that God did not ordain for you to live in fear. He did not ordain for you to live in worry. I understand your money ain't right. I understand you don't know how you're going to make it. But don't you allow fear to rob you because God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. I dare you to touch somebody and say, baby, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared. You ain't got no reason living in fear. The Bible says, according to Psalms 34, around verse 8, it says that the angel of the Lord, that he encampeth about them that fear him. Don't you know that there are angels assigned to your life? You might not have a pistol, but you got an angel. You might not have an arm here, but you got an angel. You might not have goons you can call on, but you have an angel. I dare you to touch somebody and say, baby, I got an angel, and my angel is encamped about me. What does that mean, young preacher, when the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, he encampeth about them that fear the Lord? What it simply means is that when your angel get tired, he don't go back to heaven to take a nap. He sleeps right next to you. He is encamped about you. He lays down with you. He wakes up with you. When you get in your car and crank it up, your angel is in your passenger side. Tell somebody, baby, you got an angel watching over you. Y'all ain't gonna let me preach about this thing. I just want to talk just for a little while. You have no reason to fear according to Psalms 37 and 1. It says, fret not thyself of evil doers because they will sooner be cut down like the grass that with it, baby. You wasting your time losing sleep over an enemy. You wasting your time worrying about somebody that don't like you and trying to do you in. Tell your neighbor, go ahead on, get you some good and get you some sleep tonight because just as sure as you're born, as as sure as the sun rises in the east, God will not allow your enemy to see his desire upon your life according to Psalms 27 and 1. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe, came upon me to eat up my flesh, tell somebody they got to stumble and they got to fall. Simply means, uh, stumble means they have to be ruined. Their plans are ruined. Say, neighbor, whatever your enemy is plotting, it's got to fail. The plan that they're making for your life, it's got to fail. The desire that they want for your life, it has to fail. According to Isaiah, it says that no weapon that is formed against me, that it shall not prosper. The weapon may form, but it can't grow. The weapon may form, but it shall not. So there he is. A reason for the open vision. I must have enough vision to receive everything that God has for me. Y'all pray for me here because over the last couple of weeks I've just been telling myself, son, God don't want you to be broke forever. This ain't, this ain't for everybody. Some of y'all some of, some of don't want this, so I, I'm not trying to get you to receive it if you don't want it. I'm just telling you what I said to myself. I, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, God, don't want me to have to rob Peter and pay Paul for, for the rest of my life. My, my Bible said that he owned the cattle on a thousand hill. He even owned the hill. He says that the gold and silver is mine. He said that I'm a joint out with Christ and Christ is a joint out with God. I look myself in the mirror and say, Jones, you're not going to be broke for the rest of your life. There's an over season coming. There's an overflow season coming for you. There's a season of prosperity. Sometimes you got to talk to your own self. Do you believe that God want to bless you or do you believe you got to struggle for the rest of your life? Sometimes God can't get it to you because your vision won't see it. Tell, tell somebody, I see it. I see it. I see my better days. Tell somebody, I see it. I see the prosperity. Tell somebody, I see it. I ain't going to be struggling for the rest of my life. Tell somebody, I see it. I'm going to have another take care of my house and yours. Tell somebody, I can see it. I ain't preaching to you if you can't see it. I'm only talking to folk that know how to see something. If you're crazy enough to see it, then God is crazy enough to do it. If you're crazy enough to see it, then God is crazy enough. Somebody shout, I can see it, I can, I can see it, I can see it. How do you know, John Jones, that you're right with the text according to the book of Numbers? The Bible says that Moses sends out 12 spies and they begin to spy out the land. As they spy out the land, the Bible said when the spies return, that 10 men said that we can't take the land because there are giants in the land. Understand, it was a promised land that God told them that was theirs. God told them the land belonged to you, but 10 men, they didn't see what God said. They only saw the tribulation and the trouble that was in the land, but it was a man by the name of 
Joshua and Caleb. They were inside of the 12. And when Joshua and Caleb saw the land, they say, we'd be well able to take the land. What are you saying, young Jones? I didn't come to talk to all of y'all. I just came to find the Joshua and Caleb's in here that's got enough crazy faith to say, baby, we're going to take the land that's got enough faith to say, I'm going to take my healing. I'm going to take my joy. I'm going to take my peace because God said it belongs to me. Tell your neighbor it belongs to you whenever you get ready. You can pick it up. It's already paid for. God didn't pay down on your healing. He didn't pay down on your peace. But somebody shout, he paid the bill. He paid it all. And so they believe that they can take the land. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, tell me what you see. That's all I want to know in this season. Tell me what you see. Not what you're 2020, but what you see with your spiritual eye. Because if you can see it, God can do it. If you can see it, then God can manifest it. But he can't do it if you don't see it. So I came to preach to your faith, not to your truth. You got to have enough vision to see yourself living better. You got to have enough vision to see yourself living better. You got to have enough vision to see yourself in the new house. You got to have enough vision to see yourself driving a new car. You got to see yourself vision. Watch, tell your neighbor, I want to know what you see, not your 2020, but your spiritual vision. Can I preach this thing just like I live? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 29, it says that where there is no vision, it says the people will perish. Where there is no vision, the church will perish. Where there is no vision, the marriage will perish. Where there is no vision, your destiny will perish. But if you got vision, Vision, huh? I declare you're going to leave. Huh? If you got vision, huh? your best days are in front of you. Huh? They're not behind you. Huh? I tell you to touch your neighbor huh? and say better is an ending of a thing huh? than the beginning thereof. Huh? I don't need you to re-say it. Huh? I need you to believe it. Huh? That God ain't done with you yet. Huh? He ain't finished blessing you yet. Huh? He ain't finished moving for you yet. Huh? Tell your neighbor huh? that God is not done. Huh? He's not done with me yet. Huh? Can I preach this thing, y'all? Huh? Just like I feel, huh? because you got to have vision. Huh? Because when I can see it, huh? then I know how to chase it. Huh? When I can see it, huh? I know how to pray for it. Huh? When I can see it, huh? I know how to fast for it. Huh? When I can see it, huh? I can encourage myself huh? and say, Jones, one day huh? you're gonna forget about huh? every down day, huh? every broke day, huh? every failure, huh? and every mistake. Huh? Because I got vision. Huh? Can I preach this? thing y'all huh just like I feel huh come on Gian huh? I need my mirror now huh because I feel like preaching huh turn to your neighbor huh and say neighbor huh tell me what you see huh you got to have enough vision huh to come out of your trial huh you got to have enough vision huh to come out of where you are huh? I just want to preach to y'all huh just for a little while huh and I promise to be out huh? out of your way in a minute huh? if y'all don't mind huh? mind me preaching here huh it was on yesterday huh we was doing the J.O.E. session huh? and somebody said huh? we got to preach on self-esteem huh? and so Tamara brought the mirror huh? and everybody sat down huh? in front of the mirror huh? and we told the children, huh? we said we need you to tell us, huh? tell us what you see huh? and so one by one huh? they began to sell huh? what they saw in the mirror huh? some say they were frustrated huh? some say they were angry huh? some say they felt like giving up huh? some say they saw suicide huh? I sat down in the mirror. Huh? I saw the scar on my face. Huh? I saw how small I was. Huh? I saw my little stomach in front. Huh? I say there are some things huh, about me I don't like. Huh? But I was looking in the natural mirror. Huh? So as I begin to travel home, huh, I say God give me revelation. Huh? On the mirror. Huh? Can I preach like I feel y'all? Huh? Hand me your Bible real quick. Huh? Give me your Bible. Huh? It'll help me preach. Huh? And so God told me. Huh? He said Jones the problem is. Huh? You ain't the problem. Huh? He said but the problem is. Huh? You've been looking at the wrong mirror. Huh? You've been looking at a natural mirror. Huh? It'll show you how weak you are. Huh? You've been looking at a narrow mirror. Huh? It'll show you how frail you are. Huh? You're looking at 
a natural mirror. It shows you how ugly you are. He said, but I need you to change mirrors. So I picked up the word and I changed my mirror. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, in this season, you got to change mirrors. Because when I change mirrors from the natural mirror and look into the mirror of the word, the mirror of the word says, I am the head and not the tail. I'm from above and not beneath. I am the lender and never the bar. God's mirror said, he said, I'm not just a survivor, but I am an overcomer. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, the mirror, mirror on the wall says you are an overcomer. It says you're a victor. It says you will survive. It says you will make it. High five your neighbor and say, change mirrors. Can I preach like I feel? You see, that mirror, it can only show me how I see myself. But this mirror, it shows me how God sees me. Say, neighbor, you got to see yourself like God see you. And God said you're blessed. God said you're stronger. Come on, Zion. Give him praise for the new mirror. Come on, Zion. Say, neighbor, tell me what you see. 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 Don't speak how you feel, but speak what you believe. And I believe I shall be greater. I believe I shall be stronger. I believe I'm going to fulfill the purpose of God that is upon my life because I can see it. Shout vision. Shout vision. Shout vision. Shout vision. Now turn to your neighbor and touch that neighbor and say neighbor.